Hi, this is Pastor Jared Pizarnski, and if you've clicked on this video, you're looking for answers. Well, good news for you, um, the Bible has all the answers that we could ever want, especially the answer to the most important question you could ever have in your life, which is, how do I get to heaven? The Bible tells us that we don't have to wonder about this question, that we can know for sure that we're going to heaven. In the next few minutes, I want to walk you through what the Bible says that you need to understand and what you need to actually believe to know that you're going to heaven. So take a few minutes with me and I'll walk you through the Bible and I'll show you what the Bible says about how you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven no matter what. Starting off in Romans chapter 3, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There's some things that we need to understand before we can understand how to get to heaven. And the Bible is telling us here, first of all, that we need to understand that nobody is righteous, that there's not anybody that's perfect, the Bible is saying. Again, in Romans 3.23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible here is saying that every single one of us has sinned. A sin meaning we've transgressed or broken God's law. You know, most people have heard of the Ten Commandments. You know, don't lie, don't steal, be good to your parents, many more commandments. The Bible here is saying that every time we break one of those rules, which we all have, it's called a sin. And the Bible says that I've sinned, you've sinned, we've all sinned. So what we need to know is what that means for us. What does that mean because we've broken God's law? Many people say that, you know, God is love and, and this is true, but God is also a perfect judge. So we need to understand, what does that mean that I've broken this perfect judge's law? The Bible says in Romans 6.23, it tells us what this means. And the Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Wages, meaning something that we've earned or something that we deserve. If I work a job and I work for so many hours, they give me my wages. In that case, what I've earned is money. What the Bible is saying is that because we've broken God's law, what we've earned or what we deserve is death. I mean, that doesn't sound good. Now, what the Bible here is talking about is not a, is not a physical death. We're all going to die physically one day. Even the youngest child, we could say, is, is of course physically going to die one day. The Bible is talking about a spiritual death or what the Bible calls a second death. This is the death that we deserve because of our sin against God. And in Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 14, the Bible talks about this second death. And the Bible says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Being cast into that lake of fire is the second death, is that spiritual death. So if I die and my soul goes to this place that the Bible calls hell, that is what that spiritual death is. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse number 8, God gives us an actual list of people who are going to go to hell, people who are going to get the second death. Let's take a look at this list and see it, you know, how that matches up for us. The Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers. Now, this is a pretty bad list. You know, abominable, murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, the Bible says. He says, I'm not one of those things. But then the Bible says, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So what I'm trying to get you to understand and what the Bible is teaching you here is that because of our sin, we deserve to go to hell. The Bible teaches that hell is a place of eternal punishment. If you die and your soul goes to hell, you never get out. You're tormented forever and ever, the Bible says. It's the worst thing you could possibly think of. Jesus Christ himself, when he was on this earth, he talked about hell 10 times more than he talked about heaven. And you ask yourself, you say, why is that? Why did Jesus talk so much about hell? And the answer is this. The answer is, is that God loves you and God doesn't want you to go to hell. In Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, the Bible says this. The Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
What the Bible here is saying, commendeth, means showed. It's saying God showed his love toward us, that he's given us a way out. He's given us a way to, we don't have to, go, to where we don't have to go to hell. In Romans 6.23, the last part of the verse says, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, there's a lot here. The Bible here is first says it's that eternal life is a gift. God wants to give you this gift, and the gift is eternal life. If I give my son a bicycle for his birthday, the gift is a bicycle. The gift in this case is eternal life. Eternal meaning something that never ends. And this gift is provided by or through, as Romans 6.23 says, this person, Jesus Christ. So what God did for you and how he commended his love towards you was that 2,000 years ago, God became a man. He became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. The Bible says he lived a perfect life. He was tempted as we are, but he never sinned. He never sinned one time. The Bible says Jesus lived a perfect life. He went into this world and the Bible documents that he did all sorts of miracles. He raised people from the dead. He healed the sick. But then the Bible says when Jesus was 33 years old, the Bible says that he was beaten, he was tortured, and he was put on the cross. And the Bible teaches that when Jesus was on the cross, is that he, the Bible teaches that he bare our sins in his own body. So it was like every sin that you've ever committed in your life, at that moment, it was like Jesus had done it. And this is the gift that God, you know, this is who provides us the gift of eternal life. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 8, the Bible says this. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the, again we see, the gift of God. A lot of people think that they're going to get to heaven if they're a pretty good person. If they go to church, if they pray, if they ask for forgiveness every day, if they confess their sins. The Bible here says is that you're saved by grace. Grace is something that you don't deserve. Grace is something that someone gives you that you don't deserve, but they give it to you anyway. The Bible says you're saved by grace and through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. And then in verse number nine, it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing we can do to earn this gift. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a gift. If I gave my son that bicycle for his birthday and I said, okay, son, now, you know, pay me $5 for that bike. You know, look, that might be a good deal, but it's not a gift if I charge him for it. You know, if I have you go and work for something, you know, work for me, and then I give something to you, you've earned that. You've worked for that. That is not what a gift is. That's why the Bible says again and again that salvation, that eternal life is a free gift. So it's the simplest thing. Even a child understands the concept of a gift. A gift is something that you get for free. There's nothing you can do to earn it or pay for it. So the question is, it's a gift. I want this eternal life. It's forever. How do I get it? Well, in John 3.16, the Bible tells us how we get it. In John 3.16, one of maybe the most famous verse in the Bible, the Bible says this. It says, For God so loved the world. See, He does love you. That He gave, there's that gift again, His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means anybody, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Not perish means you will never receive that second death, but instead you will have the opposite of that, which means everlasting life. And here we see the word everlasting instead of eternal, which of course means the same thing, meaning it never ends. There's many, there's dozens of verses in the Bible that say the same thing. John 3.36 is one of my favorites. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Notice those two words, believeth on. What that means is not just to believe something exists, but to put your trust in. The Bible, you know, equates believing on and belief to trust in Ephesians chapter 1. To believe on Jesus means you put 100% of your faith and trust in Him and zero trust in yourself and what He did on the cross. 
And when you do that, the Bible says in John 3, 36, you hath everlasting life. Hath meaning an older word for you have it or you currently possess it. So when you believe on the Son, you trust on the Son, the Bible says you have it, just like that. And it's everlasting. And that's, all, that's the last thing you need to understand about this gift is that it never ends. You didn't do anything to earn it. You can't do anything to lose it. In John 10, 28, Jesus himself says, and I give, there's that gift, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You have to understand that once you've been given the gift, once you've trusted on Jesus and you have that gift, there's nothing you could ever do in your life to lose it. Otherwise, if you think that you could lose it through your own actions, that's really no different than trusting on your own actions to get it in the first place. So the Bible here is giving you assurance that once you've trusted on Jesus, in Ephesians 1, the Bible uses the word, you know, that, that it uses the phrase that you're sealed by the Holy Spirit once you've believed on Jesus and trusted in the gospel, this promise. And think about it this way. If I gave my son that bicycle, for his birthday, I gave him that bicycle. And then two weeks later, and I, I told him, I said, son, this is your bicycle and this is yours forever. No matter what, this is yours. And two weeks later, I came back to him and I said, you know what? I don't like the way that you're treating your brother and sister. And I just, you know what? I'm taking your bike back. It's not yours anymore. Then it really wasn't the truth when I told him that it was his forever, was it? And the thing about the Bible and the thing about God is this, in the Bible, well, just think about God himself. God, it, he created this whole universe. Look at this wonderful world around us. God created you. He created me. He created everything around us that we see in the creation. Imagine something that God is not able to do. It's hard to even think about God not being able to do something. However, the Bible does say that there's one thing. And the Bible says in Titus 1, 2, it says, "...and hope of eternal life, which God..." that cannot lie promise before the world began. So what you need to understand is that once God promises you something, he can never take it away. So what I'm getting to, what I'm explaining to you from the Bible is that, you know, you're a sinner. You're a sinner. Most people know this. This is very easy for people to, to you know, understand in their heart that they've sinned against God. You're a sinner and the punishment, the Bible says, for that sin is an eternity in hell. It's a, it's a harsh truth, but that's what the Word of God says. We deserve that punishment because we've broken God's law. And God is a perfect judge. God is loving, but He's a perfect judge. So instead, and then to prove His love toward us, to commend, to show His love toward us, God sent His Son to take the punishment for our sin. He gave us a way out. And the beauty of that way out is it's free. It's a gift. And all you have to do is trust on the sacrifice, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ, in order to receive that free gift. So if you've heard these things today, and you believe that you're a sinner, and you believe that you deserve to go to hell, and you believe that if you trust only on Jesus, that God will give you that eternal life and He will seal you until the day of redemption, and that it's nothing of yourself, it's not of your works. If you've changed your mind about that, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart. See, it's, it's the belief in your heart that God is looking for. That God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved forever, eternally everlasting, the Bible says. So if you believe all these things, the Bible here is saying in Romans 10, 9, it's saying God just wants you to ask for it. And look, I'm just a man. I can't see your heart, but God sees your heart. God sees your heart. God knows what you believe. If you believe all the things that I've read to you and I've showed you from the Bible, I'd like to word, help you word a, a short prayer where you can ask God for this gift. You can tell God what you believe, and you can ask Him for this gift. And then the Bible says that you will be sealed, you will be saved forever. So 
Let me just help you word a short prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I deserve to go to hell. But Lord, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to take the punishment for my sin. And that Jesus died on the cross for me, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. Lord, I am letting go of all trust in myself, and I am only trusting on you, Jesus, for my salvation, and nothing of myself. Lord, please take me to heaven when I die. Forgive me for my sins and take me to heaven when I die. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you believe that, the Bible says that you're saved and nothing, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Nothing can ever change that. The Bible also says that you're now adopted into God's family. The Bible says that you've become a child of God and God will punish his children on this earth, just like my sons or my children. If they do something wrong, I'll punish them. If my children grow up to be wicked people, I may even kick them out of the house one day, God forbid but they will never stop being my children. That's exactly how your salvation works. You could ruin your life on this earth, but you can never ruin your salvation. God holds your salvation. And thank God because we would all lose it if he didn't. So God bless you. Now get into the Bible, though God wants you to get into a good church, get baptized, and actually do something for him with your life. But it has nothing to do with your salvation. It's all about being profitable to others. God bless you and have a wonderful day.